take a quick look at getting your first project set up in Nuendo 7. First thing we probably want to do is to define the audio interface that's being used. We go to our devices menu to device setup and then on the lower left hand corner select VST audio system and from the ASIO driver select your core audio or your ASIO driver for your interface. The inputs and outputs for that interface can be defined by going to the VST connections menu from the devices menu or it could open be opened by hitting F4. Here we can define the inputs and outputs for your particular audio interface. There will be presets set up for the configuration of inputs and outputs and you could add mono, stereo, or extended surround sound up to 13.1 channel widths. The controllers can be set up by going to your devices menu again to device setup and clicking on the plus sign in the upper left hand corner. Here we can define if you have a Yukon system, if you have a Mac key control, at this point we could define how the control surface is communicating whether it's via MIDI or Ethernet or USB directly here in the MIDI input and output port. All the available MIDI input and output ports can also be visible directly here within the MIDI port setup. To define the project bit depth and sample rate or frame rate, go to your project menu to project setup. Here you can see the frame rates if you need to do pull ups, pull downs, what display format you want the project to be in, sample rates up to 384K, bit resolutions from 16, 24, or 32 bit float, as well as your stereo pan law. One thing to be very aware of is where files are being recorded and saved to as you're recording. If we go to your file menu, we can go to new project and this will open up the Steinberg hub. We'll see different templates set up here as well as news items on the left hand side. Directly below the hub here on the right hand side, you'll see this very critical little step. So if you click on use this default location, it will place it into your documents folder of your Mac or PC. But you could also choose to prompt for file location. This is the one that I prefer. So now just click right here and now I'll just put this into this folder. We could create a new folder right here and hit open. And now all the audio files are going to be recorded directly into that particular folder. Adding audio tracks is as simple as right clicking and choosing add audio track. And again, our channel widths can be mono, stereo, or 13.1 interleaved, anywhere in between. So if I wanted to add eight, I'll just use my mouse scroll wheel to increment and decrement. And I want eight mono tracks. I'll now click add track and all my tracks will be selected here. Now it's a great idea to name your tracks before you record. So if you double click, you can just type in a name. And if you hit the tab key, it'll just take you to the next track so you could name it very quickly. If I wanted to place all these tracks into a folder for easy organization and track management, I could select the top track, go down to the bottom track while holding down the shift key, that'll select all the tracks, right click, and we could choose to move selected tracks to new folder. We could expand or collapse that folder that easily. Now if I wanted to colorize all of my tracks, I could select the tracks, go to my color tool, say I want all the tracks to be that color, and you could customize the colors as you want. If I wanted to assign these to a particular group for busing or further processing, I could right click and add a group channel track. We'll make this a stereo and we can give the track a name and we'll just call this a dialog bus. So if I wanted to see on my left hand side here, when I select particular tracks, I can see all of my routing, I can see inserts, sends, my channel strip, all, or my fader directly here for each of the tracks. 
if I wanted to select the top one, I could see my routing if I select all of these eight mono tracks and want to assign it to my dialog bus here, my dialog group. At this point, I hold down Alter Option plus Shift. And now I could assign these all to the dialog bus in one motion. If I wanted to add a reverb send, right click, add effects channel track. I could use any of my available plugins on my system, any of my VST plugins. And if I want my convolution reverb, I could now access that, select a track. I could now activate the send. Say I want to send it to my reverence and my send amount right there. Now, if this is all set up and it's something that I may want to use as a starting off point, I could save this as a template. So I'll go to File to Save as Template. And we'll call this Studio Start. And we'll hit OK. So now when we want to start a new project, we could just start off from our template. And that's accessible directly from our Steinberg Hub. So if I want to do recording, we may notice that there's a couple preferences that could throw people off sometimes. And one of them is you may notice that as I select different channels here, that it's automatically record enabled. Uh, so we may want to decouple that and we, if we go to our preferences and then if we go to editing and choose project and mix console there's a preference here that says enable record on selected audio tracks or MIDI tracks. So if we turn those off and hit OK we can now select the track without it being armed for record. If I wanted to arm all the particular tracks for record, I could also, and if they're in a folder, I could just arm the folder itself. Now, one of the concepts that we'll see that's very easy to get aware of in the Steinberg products is kind of using your left and right locators as kind of your default locators. And we could have these tied to our punch in and punch out. So if we want to adjust our left and right locators, we could do it directly here. Um, and we'll see we have punch in and punch out. And we could also just use the I and O for I for in, O for out. And as we play, we'll see that it'll just automatically punch in directly on those tracks and then punch out. Now, if I wanted to, to kind of just manually record tracks, and do some more. So let's say as I do this, now there's a couple of transport functions to be aware of. So you may notice that if I start my play position right here and hit the space bar to play, then I hit the space bar to stop, that's gonna jump back to where I started it. And if I wanted it to continue on instead, I could go to my preferences and under transport, we will choose to uncheck return to start position on stop. So now, when I hit the space bar, it'll just continue on from that moment in time. One other transport preference that's very handy is to enable locating while selecting an empty space. So if I just wanted to start from right here or from right there, we could just double click and then we could just locate the playhead position directly from that event. One other preference that's handy to be aware of is under editing to track selection follows event selection. So one of the powerful things you could do inside of Nuendo is to have the inspector visible here. So I could do this by track, but if I wanted to just select the track based on the event that I select. This way, the selection automatically follows whatever is selected itself. If you want to have access and to see the different files 
you could do this in the pool window, which is a collection of all the audio files and media files that are used in a particular project. So if we go to your media menu, choose open pool window, we could expand the audio menu. We could see all the different files with their different timestamps and other information. Now, if I move a file and I wanted to place it at its timestamp position, I could right click and just go to move to origin. Or if I wanted to find a particular file in the pool, I could select it and go to my audio menu and say find selected file in pool and it automatically opens it up. And if I needed to use that file elsewhere, I could just drag and drop. So as you can see, getting Nuendo 7 set up for your production needs is incredibly simple and leads to very powerful and flexible results for your production.